let's face it, many of us enjoy a nice glass of wine, but we don't necessarily know much about it. What's a good bottle of wine to pick? What are the different varieties? Is more expensive better? Oh, it's enough to drive a person to drink. Well, we decided to go straight to the source and get some expert advice from our York Region friends up at Holland Marsh Wineries. Nori, thank you so much for having us here at the winery. Tell us, where are we standing right now? Well, first and foremost, you guys are welcome and thank you for coming here. We're standing in our storefront. Um, this is actually the only place where we sell our wine. Um, it is open uh, Tuesday to Sunday every week. Um, the reason why we only sell it through here is because we make only a set amount of wine every year. We want to maintain that boutique craftsmanship style of winemaking. I think everybody out there wants to know what are the main things that we need to know if we want to become more knowledgeable about wine? Okay, so I think the most important thing for as an individual to identify is what you're, what you're interested in, what you like as far as your palate goes. It's maybe a little too much pressure to put on yourself that you should like all wines. Everybody starts from one end and they end up liking wines that they never thought that they would ever touch their lips to. So if you're into sweet wines and you're in the store, ask somebody, where, you know, where can I find a suitable sweet wine? and just go from there. Now, a lot of people are probably wondering, is more expensive actually better? I, we get this question a lot, and there are wines that are completely up there when it comes to price. Right. I personally don't believe in price being a determining factor. When I'm choosing my wine, it's all about being value-driven. I noticed when I look behind you at the prices, they're yes. ranging from $15 to $33. That's exactly. About it. We're a local winery too. We have a lot of locals that are regulars. We don't want to scare them away with ridiculous pricing. Well, I'm excited to learn more about wine, so we're going to step into our wine tasting room and you're going to teach me a little bit about wine I can't tasting. wait. Okay, Nori, what are we looking at over here? So I've lined up a couple of, uh, uh, several different types of wines that we do here. We like to try to keep it uh, equal as far as reds and whites go. We also do a nice wine. Okay. Um, so every varietal is different. Everything is done differently. It ranges from full bodied reds to something medium, all the way to sweeter style of wines. Everybody's got a different palate. And I think that's one of the most important things to note when you're, you know, if you're new, if you want to get into wine, you don't know where to start. There's a lot of pretension when it comes to this culture. So the most important thing to realize is that you're drinking wine. Just relax and, and just kind of experiment with yourself and see what you like. When you're pairing a wine with your meal, I know right. they usually say chicken and fish go right. with white and any kind of red meat go with the reds. Yeah. Is that still? It, it, I mean, to a certain degree, uh, absolutely. What is important with red wines and red meats, for example, is that tannin and proteins work together. So when they combine in your palate, it gives you a whole new experience. White wines tend to go with fish because fish being a delicate uh, protein, for example, you don't want to overpower it with something that's heavier than that. So you want your wine and your food to get along. Uh, most importantly, you don't want to hold it by kind of the bulb. You don't want their body heat to transfer into the wine. So that's, you know, just a little tip. You smell it and just close your eyes and see what it reminds you of. It could remind you of, again, those cloves or, you know, uh, ginger or whatever right. spice that comes to mind. Or it can remind you of, you know, that day in eighth grade that you smell some flowers in a field somewhere. Right. And that's one of the beautiful things about wine. It invokes these passions, it invokes these memories and these moments. That's why it's such a such an important kind of cultural uh, way of for us expressing ourselves. Don't put pressures on yourself. It's it takes some time and it takes a lot of wine, but it's a lot of fun in the process to get to that point where you can kind of start calling yourself a connoisseur. Any final thoughts on, on people starting out uh, wine tasting, what they should be looking for? Um, that's a really good question, and the best answer I can give you is just have fun. If you're going out there and you want to pick a wine, don't focus on price. Ask a lot of questions. There's so many wines in the store, and there's a lot of people that are knowledgeable. If you're going to a winery, or for example, the LCBO, wherever it is, just ask questions. Say, hey, you know, this is what I'm into. I want a sweeter wine, or this is what I'm having for dinner. Just take that first step, get that first bottle of wine, and I promise you, it's never gonna be boring, ever. <laughs>If you'd like to evolve into a wine connoisseur, the winery is offering tasting and walking tours every Wednesday to Sunday. You can bring a friend, bring a group, or even come out on your own to experience this unique Ontario grape. At the Holland Marsh Wineries in Newmarket, I'm Shay Galore for Rogers TV.